after learning about the conversion of the marginal cost into total cost by using the integrals now we are going to do the experiment with the marginal savings and we are going to convert it in the total savings this is the example number two of uh, alpha c chiang's book of mathematical economics and the page number is 465 this is the savings function in its marginal form which is given this uh, dash shows that this is the marginal version of the savings function so this is marginal uh, propensity to save in other words now uh, we are also given that at uh, saving uh, at income 81 there is no saving because uh, at eight income 81 the basic needs are still being met due to which the consumer is unable to save any amount here there is a caveat and that is the uh, reversal of the initial condition because in the initial condition we start with the independent variable and we say that it is equal to zero but here the independent variable y is equal to 81 it is not equal to zero in this given condition whereas the dependent variable that is s it is equal to zero in this situation it is opposite to what usually happens in a in, in an initial uh, initial condition where the independent variable is equal to zero uh, but here it is happening not due to mathematical reasons rather due to the economic reasons because saving is dependent upon an income and till a certain level of income one cannot save and that level in this case is 81 so this is the economic background of why the initial condition is reverse of what it usually is. Now this is the saving functions that we need to calcul uh, estimate, calculate here. Um, this is the caveat that I just explained. It is not what we usually see that the independent variable is zero. Here the dependent variable is uh, zero because the economic reasoning it is there. Now this is the summary of the uh, reversal that income cannot be zero and at the same time the saving is positive in other words savings cannot be there till uh, or when the income is not equal to zero now coming back to the solution it's um, quite intuitive that we have to take the marginal version of the savings function and we have to integrate it here we have done the same this is the marginal savings function that we have integrated and we are trying to solve it now uh, this is the simple uh, integration process in which we are uh, using the power rule and coefficient rule and the difference rule due to this minus sign and after simplification we will get this that is the indeterminate savings function now this is inter indeterminate or indefinite because of this c which is the arbitrary constant which is uh, developed due to integration so if we can get rid of this c we can get the definite solution or the determinate solution of the savings function and for that the same method will be used no matter the initial condition is reversed and that method is that we introduce the initial condition here savings will be zero when y is equal to 81 so y when income is 81 savings will be zero that is here there will be zero and here we have 81 81 so savings at 81 income is zero and you know about this this is the value of income 81 81 so we can solve it when we solve it we get this expression and in this expression these steps are easy to do the final value of the constant of integration would be minus 22.5 that you can substitute here and it will become this this doesn't have any arbitrary constant anymore and this is a savings function now it is determinate or definite version of the savings function that is the total savings function now we can make a graph of it and uh, uh, in the next slide you will see the graph of this definite version of savings function 
now this graph is self evident as the income is on y axis x axis and savings depend on it that is why it is on y axis and has a positive relationship which is definitely uh, self evident because as the income will increase the savings will also increase however till this level that is till the income is 81 there are no savings as you can see there is no height over here the value of savings or y axis is equal to zero so this is why we can say that this is that intercept that we have already observed in our solution and before it there will be this savings that is the opposite of the savings will happen which is equal to minus 20 the intercept is there however above it is that part which is meaningful for us as the students of economics it shows that the income increases the savings as it increases itself so this is how we can solve the savings function we can develop it from the marginal function and here you can see it is developed using the given marginal function and we have used the tool of integration to achieve the same thank you